This government meeting is brought to you by Eastworks and our local cable subscribers. Okay, everybody. Welcome, welcome. I'm calling to order the meeting of the Southampton Select Board for August 15th at 6 p.m. And if we could all stand and say the Pledge of Allegiance, please. Mm -hmm. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Okay. Before we get started, just one, one thing, uh, just uh, thanks everybody who participated in Celebrate Southampton over the weekend. Uh, we had great weather, uh, great dinner the night before from the church and a concert um, and all sorts of events. Uh, pretty well attended, I think, and everybody seemed to enjoy themselves. And a special thank you to uh, Mr. LaValley for being the uh, select board uh, representative in the dunk tank. Uh, so, um, <laughs> much appreciated. I, I finally found uh, where no, that I That wasn't part be of the job description, but uh, <laughs> that's good. All right, good. Um, so, anyway, thanks everybody for the, all the organizers and all the people that bothered to come out and had a good time, I think. So, okay, open time for the public. Do we have anybody here for that? Ian, I think you, you might be up. Yeah, we'll pull you in here. I know you've got another schedule, so we'll We'll put you in here. How's that? Thank you. Ian Illingsworth, Police Chief. I just wanted to provide you with an update on our transition uh, from phase one of our emergency communications to the city of East Hampton. Um, on August 3rd at around 10 o'clock, it went live. It was a coordinated effort between the state 911 department, the town of Southampton uh, emergency officials, as well as the city of East Hampton's emergency officials. As of right now, um, it's, it's, the process is going very well. Collaboration with East Hampton is uh, uh, very well. As we, uh, currently, how it works is they receive all of Southampton's 911 calls entirely. Our two stations, our 911 stations within our police department have been um, shut down. So they receive all of our calls so there's no accidental calls coming into Southampton where we don't have a certified dispatcher receiving them. And East Hampton, as of the plan is right now, and it's working well until uh, they can do the entire dispatch. They, the most effective way is they call over the radio. They let us know whenever uh, a response is needed, whether it's uh, EMS, fire, or police. And uh, like I said, the transition is going very well. We haven't had any, uh, any issues whatsoever so far. Mm -hmm. As far as, uh, as we progress through phase one on the technical side of it, Valley Communications has been contracted to install a uh, video intercom in our lobby, a li uh, lobby rather, as well as uh, a surveillance camera within our lobby. They also intend on uh, allowing it to become, I've, I've mentioned this before, but a, uh, a safe room in the event uh, there was somebody that was in crisis or in danger that came to the police department for help. It's happened before. And when someone were to walk into those doors and realize that the lobby's empty, mm -hmm. it's important that they uh, can find a way to be safe. So we're able to uh, manage to have that done as well. The first part of this is the video intercom and the lobby surveillance, though, because that's what's most readily available. Um, they suspect that maybe they can start and have that installed by next week, which is um, I really am appreciative that they're really taking into account uh, our situation and they're putting us on the uh, forefront of their operations for this. So uh, that's uh, oftentimes, you know, we're at the whim of the contractors and, and they, every, every contractor so far is helping us out to get through this. Uh, we have, uh, we ordered two mobile data terminals for two cruisers that do not have them. This is in order for our officers uh, that are in the cruisers to be able to um, communicate with the criminal justice information system through the cruisers versus go directly to East Hampton. Um, and we are also in the process, I spoke with uh, Chief Fasoli, and we have to test the portable radios of the fire department's membership to see if their repeater um, can reach East Hampton. Uh, it can, but there might be some spotty uh, locations as a result of our topography in Southampton. So as a result of that, uh, we're going to be testing those, and it'll probably be a good idea to probably move the, should this be the case, and I think it's going to be the fire department's repeater as well as the police department's repeater uh, to a location more accessible on Mount Tom. Uh, 
that is maintained by uh, the city of Hoyos Gas and Electric Department. That is about, for each repeater, it's about $60 a month fee, maybe $60 to $100 a month fee, um, but well worth it because there's generators and there's actual access to their, to their uh, whenever there, uh, there's, there's any type of technical need or assistance. Um, our dispatchers, I want to say, I just want to, uh, that's really where we are right now. I'm hoping for a target date. I mean, it would be absolutely astonishing if we could get this done by the first week of September where we can go a, a lobby entirely dark. I don't think that's probably going to be the case. Well, I think we want to have also a soft transition as well. So uh, a target date for me is um, certainly by the end of September, but hopefully mid mid-September if we can get this working. Uh, the IT department in the city of Hoyoke, I mean, I'm sorry, the city of East Hampton and the IT that, uh, uh, that I use are already uh, working with one another to uh, uh, cause for the city of East Hampton to have a virtual private network into our server so they can uh, access our computer-aided dispatch system. So. Uh, all these systems, everything's in place. It's just a matter of getting everything set up. We're on, like I said, we're, we're waiting for the contractors to get everything in order, and then we can work on that. Mm -hmm. One of the things I do want to recognize, take this time to recognize, is that we have several dispatchers that recognize that their, their jobs, their part-time jobs, as well as their full-time jobs, are in, are, are in peril right now. Mm -hmm. And despite that, they have really stepped up and they are working efforts they are working so hard to make this transition happen uh to allow it so we don't have to have it staffed by the police officers because if the police officers staff it that means i have to take a police officer from the road um and that creates a, a safety issue for the officers um and they really i just i just want to take this time to to make sure that the board recognizes their hard work and their dedication because they are working beyond what they normally work to make this to make this happen it's just mm -hmm. a testament of their dedication to the town mm -hmm. that's great great good um, and i know uh ed is working with the the uh mayor of east hampton to work on an mou so we can go to that that uh short-term transition to phase two mm -hmm. okay. any questions yeah Thanks. I've got a couple. Go ahead, John. Just, Mike, um, if at all, how far have you gone into the deficit spending? Zero. Okay. Mm -hmm. You're still using that, that uh, grant money from before? Uh, so? That grant money, but, and we're only right now with all the technical um, aspects that I just spoke of, we're about 23000 in. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's good. a good majority of it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. yeah, my question just, and you may have already uh, talked about this before, uh, that computer which is going to be sending the video over to East Hampton, is that one backed up by a generator? Uh, yes, East Hampton has a generator as well as our police department. Okay, so yes. automatic switch over, so. I'm, I'm sorry? Uh, automatic switch over. In the event automatic, no, it's not manual, yes. Okay, great. Yeah. So, Chief, when, when the, the video intercom comes on, in the next couple of weeks, maybe at, at the dispatch, then the person on that screen is going to be an East Hampton dispatcher. Is that right? Yes. They, they, the person, they, the person in the lobby will not see that person. They'll hear it. They hit it. In, it's it's much like a ring camera, except okay. it's an industrial or commercial okay. style, and they'll hit the button. It's video, and the dispatch center East Hampton will receive that notification that somebody's there. They'll also have. There's also another camera integrated with this system that um, records the entire. Uh, lobby and they'll see people walking into the lobby and then they can communicate through that that uh, camera mm -hmm. and um, at that point they can uh, inquire as to what their needs are and mm -hmm. they'll dispatch an officer to the lobby if mm -hmm. needed okay and I think you had mentioned at one point about having perhaps some signs or something there uh, some paper signs there in case somebody's hard of hearing et cetera, that would, yes, they would be able yes. to hold up to the screens I've done uh, uh, quite a few site visits to see what is the best process and as of right now um, and this is um, the state 911 department is working on this as well mm -hmm. um, because they didn't have a process and when I went to visit Southwick who regionalized recently with the city of Westfield when I went to their uh, station they have what is a placard and somebody that is deaf or hard of hearing can put it up to the ring camera and then that will notify the dispatcher to immediately dispatch a police officer to the lobby. Okay. Okay. Good. Okay. All right. 
Um, and with the going live already with the 911, you haven't noticed any difference in terms of response times? It's no, been, no. Been in fact, at some points, there actually could be faster because um, East Hampton has two desks filled typically. Mm -hmm. And um, what I've been told through the, we've had several meetings with the city of East Hampton and the emergency officials over there. And um, sometimes you'll have what, sometimes there's a distinguish, you, there's a distinguished call taker and a dispatcher. It's not typical for smaller communities like Western Mass community, communities, but Springfield, for instance, would be. But when you have the opportunity, if you don't have a high call volume, East Hampton would pick up our 911 call. They, they'd learn where it is, and then they would tell the other dispatcher to dispatch it to us as they're EMDing the call. Mm -hmm. And EMDing is emergency medical dispatching or gathering information from if it's a mm -hmm. fire or police-related call. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. And last one for me is, do we have an idea whether Northampton is working on the CGIS database at all, or are they trying? To um, I, I was notified by um, uh, uh, the, the director, Schutze, that they have started working on it. Okay. Okay. Just one more, Chris. Yeah. So I, I think the, pro the signs are probably already down or are in the, pro the safe haven, the baby safe haven? Not yet, because we're fully staffed. All right. It will be taken down, absolutely. Is there a thought process when they do come down that maybe a new sign goes up directing them to the closest location? Or not, or you don't have to answer it. I'm just I, you know, I, food I, it's, for thought. It, it, it's definitely food for thought. We can have something made up. Um, I know that the sign that we received was a state, uh, a sign developed by the state. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, it's certainly something that you know we can we can have done. That's a good yeah. thought. I, I, you know, it's it's one of those side things. I mean, I learned recently that because of Southampton, mm -hmm. that became a law. Mm -hmm. with the Southampton and one other community within about a month of each other. Yeah. Yes, mm -hmm. and and now we won't have that option anymore for mm -hmm. not that anybody should need it. But if they do, mm -hmm. directing them to the nearest location mm -hmm. might be a good alternative. Nope. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Okay. Good. All right, thanks. I All don't right. think we have any other questions. Thanks for the update. We're okay. kind of curious as to how things right. are progressing. Everything is, everything is so. going well, and, I'm, uh, and, and it's been very effective in collaboration with East Hampton. has been mm -hmm. very well. Good. Glad to hear that. Okay. Right. Thank you. Appreciate yeah. it. Thank you, Ian. Okay. All right. Uh, we don't have any public hearings or presentations tonight, um, so let's go to the town administrator's report. Let's see. We have been informed by Eversource that they will be conducting checks on their power lines by helicopter between August 16th and August 18th, including within uh, the boundaries of the town of Southampton. That schedule is weather dependent and the planned rain dates are August 21st and 22nd if necessary. Uh, our new town, our new count, uh, Council on Aging Director, Christina Johnson, started work here on Monday, August 7th. Uh, we are happy to have Christina on board and joining our team. Joe Mitchell, who has been our Eversource Blue Sky point of contact for the past three and a half years, has been promoted. Our new Eversource Blue Sky point of contact person will be Amy Henderson. I would like to take this opportunity to thank Joe. He has been great to work with uh, and has been very responsive over the years. So thank you. The Massachusetts Emergency Management Agency, MEMA, has reached out and invited the EMDs and select board members to an informal meet and greet with MEMA Director Don Brantley and Deputy Director Pat Carnavalli at their MEMA West Region 3 and 4 headquarters in Aguam on September 7th from 9 a.m. 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. Please let me know if you would like to attend as we need to RSVP. Our annual inspection of the Town Hall Elevator by the state is scheduled for Friday, August 25th. BG Mechanical will also be coming that day to replace a circulating pump and mixing valve uh, for the hot water supply in Town Hall. The Public Safety Building Committee had their kickoff meeting with HKT Architects for the feasibility study last Monday, August 7th. HKT has provided a survey questionnaire for the Police Department and Fire EMS Department to complete. HKT will be conducting a site visit of the police station and fire EMS station on Thursday, August 31st. And then the uh, Conservation Commission has issued the Certificate of Compliance to the town for the East Street Bridge project. Uh, the contractor will be taking down the erosion control measures for that project shortly. Upcoming select board meetings August 29th and then select board meetings for September to be determined. All right, any questions? 
Well, we have it. Let's just glance at the calendar here for select board meetings. Um, with the 29th, our next regular meetings would be, looks like September 12th and September 26th. Does that work for everybody? Sure. Our usual Tuesdays, okay. We'll put those on the agenda for now, okay. Thanks, all right. Uh, okay, how about some select board reports? Has anybody had meetings with their liaison committees over the last week or so, a couple weeks? John? Or, yeah. Okay, Dan, go ahead. Oh, oh, sorry. Uh, so the technology committee, uh, Matt, there's, uh, two, I'd say three things of interest. One of them's already on here, but, and Ed will give us an update on the, the voice over IP, uh, the last part of that. Um, the other one was, a review of, of how the website is being adapted by uh, the different committees in town and we just want to remind those committee chairs to uh, up, update and, and add information to their websites and they are, they are the administrator, if you want to call it that, to, for their site. So they have the power and ability to do that. So hopefully they'll, the, they will take that action. Um, and the last one is getting the, um, it's not a request for a proposal, but it's a, it's a document describing uh, the, the agreement we would have with uh, uh, either South Hadley um, uh, Fiber or uh, Whip City Fiber. Um, so the MOU between those uh, towns, so requesting information on how they would go about um, providing Southampton with the fiber optic internet service that we've we've uh, all voted to approve uh, the the MLP for at uh, through two votes so so those are the big things to mention okay any other committee Meetings? no no nothing from really planning board no. okay all right John anything? Uh, no uh, schools have, have been quiet uh, and uh, we've dealt with the PPP, finance hasn't met, and um, I'm drawing a blank on my other committee, but nothing in the past two weeks. Mm -hmm. Okay, all right, well, I'll just add a couple. Um, I did attend the meeting of the Council on Aging Board, and that was uh, partly to welcome the new director, but also to go over their uh, election of board officers uh, for the new year, which was accomplished. Uh, took a look at reviewing their finances and recommended uh, their representative to the Highland Valley Executive Board uh, and spent a good amount of time, which I would recommend that many committees do because of our change of memberships, um, going over open meeting law requirements and uh, especially looking at what constitutes a quorum within a committee and uh, what deliberation really means, when and where and how, and what you should or shouldn't do. So um, there were uh, some good good pieces of information there, and especially with new members on the board, uh, I think that was really essential to do. Uh, and then talked about a couple of possible members to the board who I see are in the audience tonight. Uh, and then uh, there will be some new hours for the Senior Center starting, I'm not quite sure when, from 8.30 to 4. I don't know if that's been determined what when that's actually starting. That's what Christina's hour said. Programs haven't been expanded yet. Okay, so, so but that's the intent will be to actually have the senior center open as long as town hall is open rather than starting uh, rather than closing early it is open oh it is open okay i'm sorry okay yes. until four okay all right um the public safety building committee as ed uh, alluded to uh, had their kickoff meeting and that was uh, quite quite uh, a good informational meeting it lasted about an hour and we talked over the vision and goals with HKT, uh, reviewed the process of all the steps that they're gonna be working on with us, the timeline and some of the key points that are gonna be happening over the next six months. Uh, they estimate the feasibility study to be completed by early March of 2024. So it's about a six month uh, engagement that we're committed to. Um, questionnaires have been sent out to the fire department and police department chiefs and I know uh, Interim Chief Fasoli, you're going to be working a bit with Chief Workman. I think uh, he's uh, a little bit long distance in Maine or somewhere, but uh, I, I understand that you guys will be working together on the on the questionnaire. So appreciate your your time and involvement in that. We hadn't totally an anticipated that, but more than welcome, given your experience with the fire department, to chip in on that. Um, obviously, these questionnaires are important um, and really focused on both the fire and police department chiefs um, because they really want to get an idea of some of the issues and the needs, the staffing pattern, uh, the kinds of 
um, space needs that people might need for office to common room to storage to special rooms, et cetera. So uh, the questionnaires, I think, will be really, really helpful. And HQT would like those completed before they come on out here, obviously, so that they have a better sense of what they're walking into. Um, there will be another Public Safety Building Committee. Hopefully we can also, as the committee, review some of the responses um, that the chiefs have submitted to HKT, and that'll be on Monday the 28th, I believe it is, um, in the afternoon as usual, uh, in-person meeting. And then the on-site meeting with HKT will be on August 31, and they will be out here basically for the day uh, touring both the fire and um, police departments, having interviews uh, with personnel. So I think as many personnel who can be around, that would be great to give their input. Um, and then they'll have a separate um, meeting, I think, with both the department leaders uh, to kind of go through things in more, more detail. Uh, other than that, uh, the bylaw review advisory committee meets tomorrow and the cost efficiencies committee will meet next week on August 23rd via Zoom. So that's it for meetings, I think. Okay. Right, next up, we have a list of appointments and resignations. We seem to have two categories from what I see here, Council on Aging Board and election workers. So let's take- I'll make a motion to approve <laughs> Edward Palmer, Council on Aging Board, term to expire June 30th, 2026. And Dennis Vogel, Council on Aging Board, term to expire June 30th, 2026. Okay. Second. All right, I have a second. Since I see both of you in the audience, would anyone like to say anything in terms of your interest in the board? If you are, just please come on up. You don't have to, but you're more than welcome to. Uh, uh, Edward Palmer, and uh, I've had a chance to see the good work that the Council on Aging does and been very impressed with people who put in so many hours to make that happen and have decided to try and step in and do a little bit uh, on my part. Mm -hmm. And it's, a, it's an honor to do so. Good, all right. Yes, you good? Okay. All right, so with that, um, all, we'll take a vote, please. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Motion passes. All right. So thank you for stepping up. I think it's great to have a little uh, gender diversity on the, uh, on the COA board as well. So that's great. So we really appreciate that because I think there's probably some new activities that you guys will think about that uh, can be very helpful in our programming for seniors in town. So thanks very much for, for stepping up. All right. Next. Um, uh, so you'll get a notice from the um, from the town clerk to come and get sworn in probably next week sometime, okay? It actually comes from Judy. Or Judy, okay. But then you'll catch up with the town clerk or her yes, assistant to, to get be sworn, sworn in, in. Yep. before your next meeting, okay? All right, then we have... Uh, Point of order. Yes. Before we take up the next sure. batch, could the yeah. chair remind myself specifically? Yeah. Um, are there any requirements around the election workers related to party affiliation, proportionate response, or number to elect before we make a motion? I believe the... I don't remember. Yeah, I believe the issue, part of the issue was um, that town administrator had to reach out to each of the town committees, the Republican and Democratic committee, for their recommendations, and I believe in our packet we have those uh, from each of the Republican and the Democratic town committee. Um, so a couple of those may be new and a couple are, are maybe um, reappointments. And then there were some other ones that uh, had been put forth that apparently have been voted on or I know that have been voted on by the Board of Registrars at their last meeting. And so I th I'm assuming the town clerk has figured out all these affiliations. I didn't sit down and count them myself to tell you I the did, truth. I did. There's one unenrolled, two Republicans, and assuming whoever hand wrote the reappointments in because there's no signature underneath. I think and that's Lucy. Um, it could be, but it's under uh, mm -hmm. the author is the chair of the Southampton Democratic Town Committee who submitted those, at least on the paper that appeared before <laughs> us. Yeah. I don't believe that's her handwriting. No. <laughs> but if, if they are Democrats, that's 11 Democrats, two Republicans, one unenrolled. And so my question is proportionately. Yeah. No. There is no proportionate requirement. Okay. It, the requirement is reach out to the two parties and have them submit the names of the, those that they would like to have appointed. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Friends. Okay. Yeah. I'm new to the Board of Registrars and at that meeting, just to clarify, uh, as, as um, Chris pointed out, the chairs of each of the committees submitted their names. But in addition to that, there were three individuals who on their own went online and made application. 
unbeknownst to anyone, they went to Lucy. We first heard about them at the Board of Registrars meeting last week. And she claims, and Lucy says, that she needs to have a roster of about 14 people, given schedules and so forth, for elections. And so this gets her to that number, the number of applicants we have here. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, so as long as we're sure that we've gotten the information, which it looks like we do, from both both committees in terms of who they're recommending, yeah. um, and then others were some of these others were reappointments. So we have both reappointments and a couple of new new members. So as somebody would like to read through that, just be sure that you're reading who's reappointing and who's a new new person. Does that answer your question, John? Are you okay with that? Or you, that answered the first, yeah. Okay. Like, okay. Yeah. yeah, it's a, a little bit. To say, but yeah, it's a little bit different than. The MGL requirements for the board of registrars. For the register, the register is proportionate, correct? It's like a two, yes. two, one. Yes. Yeah. Yes. You can't. You cannot have a majority of the yeah. four, mm -hmm. meaning three from one party. Yes, Janet. Yeah, I, I'm sorry, Janet Kane, chair of the Democratic Town Committee in town, and I did go through some of the new names on our um, list of registered Democrats, and those people do not appear. Um, as Democrats on our town list. The first two on the list, or the, the second and three? Because the first yes. one's been on your roll. Yes, yes. Yeah. Just because I wanted to validate that as well. So mm -hmm. yeah. my understanding is that we're un unenrolled as well. Well, they have both been, well, I just... Except if, if you look like, is it appropriate to use their name or no? Um, yeah, we can mention by name. Yeah. It's on the docket, right? Mm -hmm. So like under Elizabeth Grazzi, mm -hmm. she self-identified as a Democrat, and Lucy signed certified that the information above is true and complete. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I would have to, but my object, and, and it's, I don't really have an objection to how many Republicans or how many Democrats we have on there, but as somebody who doesn't like either party, and it's just an unenrolled, <laughs> I just wonder where was due notice given to the unenrolled citizens of this town who, make up a significant double-digit proportion of the town. And now if nobody applied, nobody applied, that's fine. And I understand it's easy because we have a registered chair of the Republican, a registered chair of Democrats to send the letters, um, and it's too late to do it here, but I just think in true transparency, it would behoove us to print out, even if it's on our website, 30-day notice. If you're unenrolled and you want to apply, mm -hmm. here's how to do it. Um, I it's 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 more of a transparency issue. Yeah, and I than honestly don't know. How the numbers come out. I don't know if that notice had gone out on the website. I would have to check that. Well, a actually, and I'm going to say it's. I'm going to refer to it this way, and I'm unenrolled too. So, uh, I'm going to refer. It's politically correct. It does not refer to notifying the unenrolled or anybody else. But uh, the actual job vacancy is on the website, and the application is on the website. Mm -hmm. there you go. Okay. Well, and I guess my two questions, following on John's, though, there are two in here that go back to November 22, and neither one have Lucy's stamp on them. So that was my concern. And that would be um, Carol Lacasse and Shannon Bennett. So I would at least like to hold off on those two until we get Lucy's Stamp of all, all of those go through the town clerk's office. That's all I can say. Mm -hmm. Well, who? Well, and I, mean, I'm, I, I don't know this, but who? I'm assuming I, I, mm -hmm. I acknowledge that that's not Lucy's signature down at the bottom, but is that the assistant town clerk's signature? Uh, okay, it could be. Could be. It, it looks like McCarthy oh, yeah. or McKinsey. Okay, yeah. it's very faint, but okay, I do see that now. Okay, well, and if we've heard that the board of registrars has voted this slate through, okay, I withdraw my suggestion. Okay, would somebody like to read off these names then and, and put them forward as appointments? I'll speed read if you want. <laughs> I make a motion to appoint Jeanette Brown, election worker, reappointment, Janet, term to expire August 15th, 2024, Elizabeth Miller Gratzky, Gratzky, election worker, new, term to expire August 15th, 2024, Carol Lacasse, Election worker, new term to expire August 15th, 2024. Shannon Ray Bennett, election worker, new term to expire August 15th, 2024. Troy Chilson, election worker, new term to expire August 15th, 2024. Patricia Isaac, 
election worker, new term to expire August 15th, Patricia Kavir, election worker, reappointment, term to expire August 15th, 2024, Lucinda Palmer, election worker, reappointment, term to expire August 15th, 2024, Susan Seabolt, election worker, reappointment, term to expire August 15th, Elaine, Elaine Hamill, election worker, reappointment, term to expire August 15th, 2024, Jane Howard, election worker, reappointment, term to expire August 15th, 2024. Marion Hamill, election worker, reappointment, term to expire August 15th, 2024. Mary Robinson, election worker, reappointment, term to expire August 15th, 2024. And Joanne P Perrier, Perrier, election worker, reappointment, term to expire August 15th, 2024. Okay, we have a second. Second by Dan. Okay, any further discussion on this? If not, can I have a vote, please? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. okay. Hearing no opposition, that is all approved. Thank you very much. All right. And okay. I'm sorry if I butchered anyone's name. <laughs> you did pretty well tonight. You did pretty well. All right. Excuse Next up. Christine? Yes. Before you go to that, you asked for new business, and then you kept on going after Ian left. Uh -huh. I asked for new business. I wanted to bring forward. Public comment. Okay, that was under public comment that Ian came up. So that was in the first few minutes of the. Uh, yeah, okay, I, I didn't realize. I, I just assumed you might be here with, no. with the chief. I'm sorry. Um, uh, we can take it up under any other business, perhaps, or what would be your druthers? Yeah, sorry. I didn't realize there was somebody else here for open time. My my apologies. Um, other, so starting in the new business on the agenda, uh, we have bylaw draft proposals discussion, membership on boards and committees, and elected and appointed committees, boards, commissions, councils, ad hoc committees, groups, operating procedures. Um, and Francine, as the chair of the committee, would you just like to give us an overview? I think, um, it, I, I will say, from my point of view, given that we're missing two members tonight, mm -hmm. I think this is our first read through, so I would rather not. Okay. Um, you know, vote on anything tonight, but I think we'll take this under under review. This is our first review of the um, proposed bylaws. So go ahead. That's fine. Francine Tishman, Gledale Road, <clears throat> chair of the bylaws committee. These are, uh, most of the work that we do is revising existing bylaws. What we have, be what you have before you tonight are two new bylaws. We saw a need um, for providing some structure, some guidance to the town committees and boards. And going through the usual process that we do that involves any other department or committee, we uh, put the drafts out, to sent them out to the committees. I mean, we have been working on these for, I'm gonna say 18 to 24 months and back and forth with committees. Um, unfortunately, we haven't had a response from all committees, but we did make several attempts to get this information to them so that we could get some feedback and make sure that you know, they were all in agreement with what we were proposing. We did hear back and incorporated uh, the recommendations and comments from about four or five other uh, town, town committees. Um, and you'll see that you know, it provides guidelines and structures so that committees all function more or less in the uniform manner with, with one another. So that one committee does it handle do things one way and another committee does it another way they do their individual business but they follow the same procedures and processes and so that's basically what we were attempting to do the other thing it does is it provides a lot of good information to people who are new on boards or interested in in coming on board or to committees so that they they have an understanding of responsibilities obligations and 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 the guidelines that they'll be following so that's it it's really all in your hands now and thank you and just to note that these would normally just per process, these come to select board for any comment and review, go back and forth for any kind of edits, and then at some point, once we're ready with them, we would vote on um, moving these toward the town council for final review and eventually getting on to the town meeting warrant at some point in time when there's a special town meeting or an annual town meeting. Okay, I don't know if everybody's had a chance to take a look through these. Any any first comments? These are any correct? These are these are new ones, right? These are not revisions. So these are brand new. They don't nothing exists right now. Nothing exists. Okay. So 
If I may, under the first one, mm -hmm. uh, proposed bylaw membership on boards, committees, commissions, councils, AKA groups. Mm -hmm. um, the section six, I think probably just needs to be expanded. And I don't know if it's easier just to say in accordance with existing MGL or not, but specifically I'm thinking about a, a vacant elected post on the school committee. The proper forum to fill that is a joint meeting of the existing elected officials of the school committee and the select board, not just the select board itself. Okay. I think that's the only committee that that applies to. Okay. Oh, so there, there are others, and actually, somehow, it's as long as the committee has notified the select board that there is a vacancy, and I believe it's within 30 days. Right. So whatever that language needs to be. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, okay. Norris has gone through it. Yeah. It's been four years, but the the. Um, the the other and i don't know where this falls in here or, or perhaps it's silent but this kind of talks to the workflow of the process of how somebody identifies the post applies for the post what process it goes through mm -hmm. um I, I guess i'll just reiterate from two weeks ago is is i think there needs to be some sort of process where how i have no problem with a group or a individual or an office being delegated to whittle it down to put its final submission forward. But I think if folks take the time to apply that, again, in the transparency, mm -hmm. we should know whether there was one applicant or 15 applicants. And regardless of the number of applicants, this is the final one or two that X is putting forward. Mm -hmm. And someone just have that spelled, spelled really? out. Yeah, okay. And I realize it's going to be different depending on. Is that really necessary, or is it just that they that we notify the town notifies the, pe the persons that have applied that aren't accepted? Well, I guess I guess from my point of view, serving as a select board member, I, I guess that would be a data point that I would want to know. I'd I'd want to know if 15 people applied and only two applications made it to us. Mm -hmm. Who were those other 13 people? Why were they mm -hmm. not considered, or why were these two so exceptional? Mm -hmm. And then, are there other posts that these 13 can go for? And, and outside of the select board, no, maybe nobody needs to know that. I like the idea in here that whatever board they're applying for, somebody has to go back to that individual chair mm -hmm. of that committee and get feedback. Mm -hmm. I also. I don't want to rewrite this at all, but I, I would also encourage that whole process for reappointments. Mm -hmm. I think have, that, have the yeah. chair certify whether or not this person should be, from their point of view, should be okay. considered for recertification. Yeah. I thought I thought I had seen that in here, but I can't pull it up right now. But the the reappointment part, um, yeah. because I think that was one of the things that we didn't want to assume that people are necessarily. Um, in, in do we say going that, to be reappointed? Yeah. That discussion can take place on. In executive session, in case it's a, a sensitive topic, I mean, we don't want to offend people that are applying for positions to help the town um, when it's not needed. You know, there are only certain conditions that you can do executive session and Dan. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I guess I have no problem with um, delegating the authority of making the down selection, but that's my opinion. Mm -hmm. But I think going back to the chair of the, the committee and also having, I think it was in here about, um, is it in this one, about having the p potential member who is a um, potential candidate who's applying to at least attend a meeting of that committee so that they make themselves known to that committee and make that interest known. That was yeah. in, you know, section four looks for feedback from that committee, which I think is important. Mm -hmm. Because, I mean, unless, there are plenty of committees that we, we the five of us, are not liaisons to. Mm -hmm. So we, I mean, unless we're gonna go back and scour the minutes, assuming they're posted, to see who's attending and who's not attending, mm -hmm. we're kind of taking it on blind faith. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, okay, okay. Not that we should turn any volunteer away, but. Okay, so that's the, the membership one. Any thoughts on the um, operating procedures? That's a bit longer on that one, um, but it's some of the same basics. And, and again, I think as Francine pointed out, just I think we were trying, you're trying not to, to take for granted that people know how to run a meeting. <laughs> you know, many of us have been involved in other committees and other boards somewhere in our lives, but, um, you know, just understanding, you know, how it, how it, um, 
how it looks when you're involved in a, in a town committee, what, what the responsibilities are and how the duties get divided. I see there's a couple of places where we've got to fill in an MGL or something in here, but other than that. Um, yeah, my, my only my yeah. feedback on that is, is I don't think it's appropriate to always put the burden on the clerk of the committee to post the minutes. Mm. We, we live in a, uh, an age where we run the spectrum from volunteers that are 16 years of age to 104. <laughs> serving on committees um, I think and I realize that this is contrary to popular existence but you know I think at some point circumstances need to be made and the town clerk is the keeper of those records by statute um, you know in, in prohibiting somebody from serving as clerk because they don't have a home computer and are unable to post to the minutes even though they may t may take wonderful shorthand I mean, you know how my pronunciation is. <laughs> it, 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 they, you know, if they can transcribe it into, into written form and they can get to the clerk's office, I think we can arrange to get it up there. Uh -huh. um, so when reasonably, when reasonable, the clerk should put this on, but it shouldn't be a, a barrier to holding that office on a committee. Is that number C? Uh, C. C? Okay. Yeah, I think there is a, there is a provision somewhere. I think and, it, and, it, and honestly, it kind of goes along the ways of, of Americans with Disabilities Act. Right, right making a, a, appropriate accommodation, not for everybody, mm -hmm. but. Yeah, and I think in, in recent communication that Lucy sent out too about open meeting law, which is coming up on, on the 22nd. I'll do a plug while I've got that on my head. Um, August 22nd, there's a special meeting that Lucy's organizing at 5 p.m., I guess, for especially new members of boards and committees to, to go over open meeting law and understand what that's all about. So um, that would be a, a good time to also kind of talk about this. But I think the notion is that if, mean, if nobody is posting them electronically, that at least a hard copy needs to get to the town clerk. I think that's her usual um, her usual uh, direction to us so that can be maybe clarified a little bit yeah the one about um, membership I think on number section six just um, notifying the chairs of intended absences I think that's a really key one I know I've served on various committees where you're kind of sitting around and waiting yeah. and, and not here but in other committees that you're waiting to see whether you've got all your members showing up or not and whether you have a quorum or not so I think in some cases to have that notification ahead of time, whether there's a quorum, then um, that really allows the chair to figure out <laughs> whether the meeting can go forward or not. And then people that are that are absent without any real um, information back and forth with the chair, at least, uh, I think there's a provision here to um, to be possibly removed from the committee by the committee vote if they don't participate for a six month period in the group's work. So those are some you know different things that are more. Um, I don't know, more stringent in a way that doesn't exist right now, but it might serve as a good reminder for people. And you would probably actually have to add the term appointed to that particular section because you cannot do that with an elected body. Uh, right, okay, yeah. good point, yep. Like under section 15, uh -huh. if, if it's appointed, why do you need 25 registered voters to do it? If it's elected, yes, you do, because uh -huh. now you're doing a, a citizen's petition recall. For election, right. That would be the 25 voters for elected, right? Yeah. Not appointed. Yep, yeah, good point. Okay. All right. Good steps. Yeah, so this is, you know, at least a good first, first thought. And uh, bylaws is meeting tomorrow, so they can take a look at this and maybe get back to us with another draft, and we can pick it up when we've got more people here. But this, um, I think, are two new ones that we can possibly entertain. If you've got any other comments later on, I think you could just email them to Francine. Most people have her email address, I think. Uh, okay, good. Uh, next up, financial software recommendations. Ed, uh, we're almost there. Yeah, almost there. Mm -hmm. uh, intent is to finish that off for the 29th. And the main thing there was you were going to take a look at meeting with Harper's on the payroll segment. Yeah, and we've got that because this week happens to be um, the schedule for Treasurer Collector School. We've uh, Jen and I have that set up uh, next week mm -hmm. with a uh, representative from Harper's. Okay, very good. Okay. All right, the next up is the follow-up recommendation, first steps on the fire department operational review. Um, as those of you who may have attended the meeting or at least have heard about it. We had um, 
former chief Russ Anderson give us an overview uh, a couple weeks ago about his uh, review and assessment study of the current fire EMS department made some recommendations that we will be taking into consideration but I think there are a couple here that are maybe low-hanging fruit that um, Ed if you want to pick this up that you thought maybe we could try to tackle and uh, with Chief Fasoli here uh, we can talk about those in more detail yeah I just com come up with a, uh, a, a couple uh, that seem to be low-hanging one was uh, the re recommendation to uh, do the nine, NFPA 1911 inspections for engines four and one along with ambulance two. And the other was to uh, move forward and do the air quality testing uh, for the, uh, the fire station headquarters and the trailer quarters. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Chief, would you like to join us? Uh, Rich Fasoli, interim fire chief. Uh, the 1911 inspection is uh, basically for the uh, for the over road trucks. It's called a DOT federal inspection. It, it's the same same uh, inspection. Uh, I've spoken to both neighboring fire departments. Neither of them do the 1911 inspection. They both rely on the the DOT federal inspection and state inspections. Um, our equipment is maintained by Skyline Services in Westfield, which also maintains Westfield Fire Department equipment. Uh, we haven't had any issues with them. They're, they're very thorough. Uh, if they have any issues, they, they contact us right away, and uh, we decide if we're going to fix it right then or if we have to bring it back. Um, my background is... Uh, my full-time job is I'm a ASE master truck technician for a less than truckload freight carrier in Chigabee. I've been there 25 years. Um, I know the equipment here is uh, being maintained properly. I just don't think that the uh, chief workman before he left, he had one of the uh, trucks inspected right. under 1911 mm -hmm. and it cost us $1,500. Mm -hmm. to do the inspection and all they did was inspect it they didn't do any repairs or uh, and that including in that cost was six hundred and sixty dollars just for the company to travel here from Rhode Island and then back to Rhode Island so I don't think it's it's a cost effective for my department to uh, to have the 1911 done like I said I, I spoke to both departments and neither of them have it done and who, why, why don't they have it done, I guess is the question. Uh, because it's, it's kind of a redundant. Um, having, their, having your equipment serviced every year, they, do, they have to do a federal automatically when they service the truck, mm -hmm. once a year. And same with state inspections. Uh, the Mass Department of EMS, they come in, they inspect the ambulances once a year also. Mm -hmm. So between you know, in-house inspections, we do uh, inspection weekly on the trucks. The uh, trucks are serviced uh, based on mileage, um, at least minimum once a year. The ambulance A1 goes by mileage also. That's usually two or three times a year just because it gets used all the time. And uh, so my recommendation is, is not to have the outside company come and do it just because of mo mostly the cost mm -hmm. and it's like I said it's, it would be redundant where you know we have the companies doing it already so is there anybody closer than Rhode Island to do this uh, not that I'm aware of no mm -hmm. chief, yeah. chief the existing inspections that you're doing now do they generate reports that would if right. they, we if we a get a uh, found every time they service it we get a uh, it's a federal DOT certification that they inspected it, and uh, everything either pass or fails. And if it fails, then you know we have to take care of it right then and there. So, so do you know when the last time this engine was was done? The one that Chief Workman had done just recently? Uh, engine three, he just had done uh, the week he left. Right. They did it. We've got the report from but, on scene, but on the scene, other yes. Pr prior to that. Prior to that. Uh, prior to that, it was done at its yearly service in uh, November 29th, 
2022. So it's it's coming up again. Um, the the equipment doesn't run a lot of miles during the year. They they run more hours than miles, and that's why we have it serviced at least once a year. Uh, a DOT inspection is once a year. You have to have it done once a year. So who requires this 1911 inspection then? Uh, it is a recommendation. It's not a requirement. By? An FPA. An FPA. National Fire Protection Association. Yes. All, all NFPA are their guidelines. They're not, their guidelines, recommendations. They're not, you know. We do use the uh, hose testing, um, ladders, NFPA regulations. We do those. We do the air packs. We do the air bottles. So it's just this one, it's just. Mm. So I guess I don't understand, what's, what's the delta between uh, 1911 inspection and inspections we do now? Uh, it's just a, basically a different name. NFPA has their own name for the inspection, and the federal government has theirs. We overlay the two, we see you know, the same. They're the same, same inspection, diagram. yeah. <laughs> okay. And the kind of cost between the two? What's the difference with, what's the, that? What's the, difference with the DOT inspection cost-wise? Well, that, that's into the... Uh, they do it while they do the service, so it's included. Um, last service there at Skyline for approximately the same amount, $1,400, but they did the complete service. They changed the oil, they changed the filters, the air filter, uh, air dryer filter, fuel filters. I mean, these trucks, they hold, this truck here holds uh, almost six gallons of oil. Um, so, it's a lot of oil. so it, 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 in layman's terms, is the DOT inspection similar to what a private citizen gets for their own vehicle, their safety inspection? Yes. All the equipment's working. That's right. Supposed they to do. Be they do the federal and the state inspection at the same time. So. And that generally coincides with the oil change with the service. Right. Right. Annually. Right. Okay. That's how. That's the easiest way we keep track over there is by the state inspection sticker. Mm -hmm. When it's coming up due, that's when I have the service done at the same time. And right now, the entire fleet has valid state inspection stickers. Right. They're all state inspected. They're all DOT inspected. They're, va they're valid. There's no R's. What's that? They're valid. There's no R's. Uh, engine one has a rejection sticker because it has an oil leak on the uh, front drive axle. Um, so we need to get prices to see to repair that. Um, but other than that, everything is in service and properly maintained, yes. Okay. I guess one of the things looking, we, we don't have the report from the DOT, but we do have the on-scene report that was done at the end of June. Right. On engine three, is it? Three. Right. Yeah. So I guess, you know, things like um, where it says work complete, but that really just means that they've identified problems. They haven't actually done any repairs on it, right? Right. So, it was strictly an inspection. Right. So they've done, recommended some, there was an oil leak on this one, but I mean, tire pressure seemed to be an issue. On right. They, and some they were going off of the, uh, every tire has a tire pressure re, you know, recommendation on the side. Right. Um, we run ours at 100 PSI. Um, where I work, my regular job, fleet mechanic, all our tires are at 100. That's, that's a standard. So I, Even you know, the 120, 130 pounds, that's, that's an extreme amount. I mean, those, those tires would be rock hard where so that's what the manufacturers recommend right. according to this report. Though. Right. That's if that's if that tire is, you know, the Able equipment to. is loaded to the max. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They did find one uh, air tank bracket that was broken, and I have that part on order. I'm just waiting for it to come in. Mm -hmm. So you're, if I'm hearing you right, you're not recommending that we go forward with the 1911 inspections as this report indicated as a recommendation to us but to continue on with the right the yearly federal. DOT inspections right it's, it's the same inspection it's just a different name mm -hmm. okay I guess in my mind when I read this I'd, I would have been 
in favor of going for the inspections of you know following this format with with the entire fleet that's there. So um, I get uh, yeah. I mean, I'm uh, I'm happy to defer and rethink my view on this, but what I'm what I'm seeing here is an overlay of justification in replacing the fleet or at least a portion of the fleet right and to do that to get citizens involvement i think it's better that we have the documentations now if and i haven't seen it if the dot inspection report is similar mm -hmm. and will serve that purpose for public education mm -hmm. that might i sense. i could be yeah. Do, I'd like do, to go along with that. Yeah. Do all of these come up in November? You think, or for the, that? For, do all these other ones, the other engines and and the uh, ambulance, come up in November for the DOT inspection? Are they varied throughout the year? Or? Uh, most of the the fire trucks are all right around October, uh -huh. October November. We try and keep them all together. Mm -hmm. um, I guess what I would like to suggest. Uh, go ahead, Ed. A couple things. One is, and, and John started to allude to it, you know, is there, is there an, a, any advantage to having, you know, an, an, another in, in depart, independent third party evaluation of them? And since it was already started with this company, you know, what, what is that? Is there a plus there? And, and what is that? Number two is, okay. Yes, they charge to travel, but if you have them do the two apparatus or the three apparatus in one day, you've now deferred that $660 over two or three vehicles rather than just one. Um, and then the other thing is, you know, I'd, I'd probably recommend to the board that even take a, even take a look at what that what the DOT inspections were for mm. the three fire apparatus, you know, last year. Yeah, now that was going to be my, my thought yeah, would be. You know, and then the, the real telltale one would be you're going to have at least two reports from two different companies on engine three um, uh, to look that side by side to compare and say, okay, are, are they apples to apples? And really the mm. third party one isn't needed or is there some differences that might have some value to it? But I was, I, I was looking at it somewhat the same way as John uh, was as, as capital expenditures or if there are any huge maintenance costs that might be out there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think I would, I don't know what anybody feels. So I, on this particular thought of one of the low hanging fruit, I. Personally, I think I would like to see the, the reports of the last inspections for these vehicles so we could okay. just take a look at them and then pick this back up at the next meeting and, and look at this more clearly and give you better. Yeah, I have all those. Uh, okay, and that would be helpful. Just, uh, Chief, does the, the DOT inspection apply equally to the ambulances as well? Yes. Right, so we, we, could, we could ask you to, we, we are asking you to provide the last DOT inspection for the entire active fleet. Mm -hmm. Right, mm -hmm. except for your vehicle and the brush truck mm -hmm. or the right. pickup truck. Well, the brush truck is too small. Okay. So, but the, the, the three front, run, front line apparatus and the two ambulances. Right. We should be able to get those five reports. Yes. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. That would be good. And we'll pick that up at the next one. Then how about on the, um, the second recommendation about the air quality testing? Both, and this would be both from the station and the, the uh, yes, trailer Yes, I, I <clears throat> would like that, yes. Okay. And do you have ideas of where that can be done or how we contract that out or companies uh, that do that? I don't know. I do. I'd have to look into yeah. it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So we'd have to actually go out for proposals or quotes or what do we do? Or we just... You can, we can get uh, estimates, estimates to do it. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. Yeah, I think, I mean... You I want that form of motion to authorize the temporary yes, to go forward in conjunction yes. with the fire yes. chief? Yep. To perform air quality testing of both the firehouse and the trailer mm -hmm. second okay yeah i think uh you know we've we've heard about these issues for a long time and i think that now is beyond time to take action on these and get these studies done and, mm -hmm. and figure out where we're going with that but okay all those in favor this bleemer road is um i mean it can be done there but we don't the uh, personnel aren't staying there just the truck is there mm -hmm. Uh, we don't keep any gear there. Pretty uh, much dry it, storage. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's just for 
our backup truck mm -hmm. engine one mm -hmm. okay. in storage. All right. Well, let's let's focus on the main station, I guess, and the uh, certainly the the trailer where yeah. everybody's hanging out there and spending the night. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. I have a question about the yes. Uh, Dan? In the presentation we saw, the, it was pretty dirty and dusty. Um, Jen, does it forward? Oh. Sorry, I always forget about that part. Uh, in the presentation we saw, it was pretty dirty and dusty. Um, does it help us before we do this air quality test to clean the place up? Uh, Say that again? It, it was pretty dusty in, in the photos that we saw. Oh, uh, yeah. I mean, the building was built. The center two bays are from 1863. Right. Uh, outside bays are from the 1970s. Yep. I mean, we try and keep it clean, but. Understood. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, the back room, the water is leaking through the ceiling. Yeah. Um, there's not good ventilation in the back. I mean, all there is is just a couple of little casement windows. So. <laughs> Sounds like I need just a building inspection. Right. <laughs> okay. Uh, I have. I know. <coughs> on um, on, on yeah. the motion. Yeah, we had a motion on that. I think did we? Yes. Yeah. Motion and second. Motion. No vote. Yeah. Okay. We had a second. Dan, by Dan, all those in favor of Aye. that. Aye. Aye. All right. So let's move forward with the air quality testing, uh, as stated. And Chief, I've just got one other question. Uh, we only had two on the agenda, but I, I guess the other third one I had and ties in a little bit with um, maybe what Chief Ellingsworth was referring to tonight. But it's also in the report about the um, the radio communications equipment that the um, the radios that we have now. The portable radios are the Motorola. 1250s, right. which is basically 1250s, yes. Which is basically the model has been discontinued. So at some point, we're going to run out of possibilities to get those repaired, replaced, right. spare parts, whatever. So, is there? Um, do we have an existing inventory of all of our mobile radios and yes. features? And yes. we already have that. Okay. Yes. Then maybe if along with the reports from the DOT, if you wouldn't mind throwing that into, so we could kind of take a look at what that looks like in terms of the okay. the inventory that exists already. That would mm -hmm. be helpful. Because do you operate with two different radios? Does, does command staff have a, a radio, a newer radio, and fire ground staff have the portable radio that's discontinued? Uh, everybody has the same radio. So when the PD got the newer upgraded radios, t two or three of them didn't go over to the fire. Department? Right, we have two of them. Um, I have one um, at my house, and one is at the station. Um, so we do have two of those. Um, are those the tri-band or this is something else? Uh, I'm not sure the name the brand, brand but I know they're expensive. Those should be the tri-band because that was highway, wasn't it? Highway and, and police. police. High, highway and fire EMS. Yeah, EMD. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, okay. Yeah, we'd gotten some, some of those radios through the CARES Act right. a couple of years ago. So. Right. But yeah, I think in, in terms of the basic you know, radios for the force, if things are going out of date, then we ought to try mm. to get ahead of that. And if there's already an inventory there, at least we can kind of take a look at what that might mean going forward I just have one one more follow-up question and if, if you don't have a response that's fine too but when we got this presentation I asked that that you be given time to look at it mm -hmm. and review and I guess my question to you is is there anything in this report that you believe is absolutely misstated and you want to correct the record now uh, I'd have to go through it again okay. I mean I, I've gone through it a couple times um, I, uh, I made some notes, but I, I uh, wasn't really prepared to speak on that tonight. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, I mean, I'm, uh, I'm okay with continuing for a little bit, but mm -hmm. if you have feedback, right. I personally would like to hear it prior yeah. to us embarking on this new fire chief selection process. Mm -hmm. okay. I don't want it to stall the process, but if you have any feedback to come with us, because in my mind, at least I'm forming a lot of opinions around this report. Mm -hmm. And so if... if if there's a different take or different information that me as one of five, right, you would want okay. to consider. I'd, I'd like to have that sooner rather than later. Yep. So. Mm -hmm. Good. Okay. Thanks. All right. Thank Thanks you. Thanks for that. Thank yep. All right. Good. <clears throat> so, following on that, um, we have the uh, fire chief job profile slash duties, and this is a an idea of a draft. And John, you've taken the lead as the the select board person on the committee or forming yeah. the committee so to what I what I did for tonight just to start to start the conversation not intending to finalize mm -hmm. it tonight is put together a um, six page I guess first page is, is a posting summary that we would have to send through PPPQ PPQ 
to get through um, looking for you know fire chief slash director of emergency management and what that entails um, we can we can adjust the annual salary but again this is just meant to be a starting point and then I go into a more lengthy one of a position statement that talks about our town just a couple paragraphs about how Southampton came to be what its current makeup population is a little bit on our finances um, where we're trying to go with you know being able to stay within the two and a half and not rely on overrides while staying true to the to the citizens and the three unions that we, we deal with um, I talked a little bit about what we did with the ARPA money we should add in a few more things there um, and then uh, I missed one of the towns yeah. but then the budget you know I think it's important for the next chief coming in to, to, to see that in this fiscal year 24 budget we've increased the fire department slash EMS budget by 35 mm percent -hmm. you know year over year that's that's a significant increase some might argue I might argue that's still not enough money but it, it to me an outsider looking at the town would see that any department that can increase their budget by 35 percent in one year there's a com significant commitment by the leaders of that community to, to step up and do something mm -hmm. um, long-term capital improvements you know obviously as it relates to the fire department we have the public safety bill and we have the council on aging I think we have a few more in there we could put in our work on the infrastructure in the water department but then public safety, I, you know, I disclosed the fact that we're transitioning our dispatching to East Hampton, at least at the interim. Mm -hmm. um, I highlighted a couple sections where we need to add. And then the Southampton Fire Department, that was pretty much a cut and paste from Chief Anderson's report about the makeup. You know, 24 hour day, seven day, 24 hour, seven day coverage. We have 46 part time per diem employees, six of them um, fireside. Um, call force and then call force yep and then um, I mentioned the report the report would be available and then it gets into the position and the duties knowledge skills and abilities and I think this is I think this is a good start here but also looking at the bullet points of Chief Anderson's report mm -hmm. Um, incorporating those in there like for example his first one was you know which I realize is missing here by no fault of other than I did this on my lunch break mm -hmm. exhibit strong EMS understanding either at the basic or paramedic level and have uh, have strong knowledge and examples of fire training so I think taking his bullet points and those and mm -hmm. finessing them together yep. I, I think we're off in the right direction to mm -hmm. Hopefully, get this off and published. Yeah, no, I think it's a good beginning here. Um, just one thing on the the knowledge and skills. Just on the very first bullet, on minimum of post secondary degree in fire science, public administration, management, or related field. Um, would you also think about including um, or related? I don't know, extended experience or something in case somebody, you know, how important I guess is the post secondary degree in fire science? I don't know myself. And that would be just a question. Oftentimes you see that, you know, it could be a, a degree, but it could also be, um, you know, relevant. Years you know, of experience. X number yeah. of years of experience. Yeah, something. and the third bullet point talks about 10 years. Mm. Um, but again, just the wording, he kept saying fire service, fire service. I mean, yeah. if you're in Southampton, I think you understand fire service means fire slash EMS service. Right, yeah. So maybe even changing it to fire backslash EMS I think, yeah, services because I think that's, that wording. That wouldn't be necessarily understood by somebody from the outside implying applying yeah. uh, I would think yeah yeah Dan did you have any first thoughts as you look at this um, no I mean I help uh, clean it up and submit my comments I think I'd, I'd want to go back and just double check some of the the comments in in Chief Anderson's report I think um, you know somebody who I think is kind of you know we've got a I think he said in the report more than once that we're at a crossroads so it's time to you know, sit back, take stock of things, take a look forward, and, and look for somebody with some pretty strong managerial skills, too, and not necessarily somebody who's always jumping on the ambulance or whatever, but you've got to manage a staff, and especially if we hire people now, whereas in the past, Chief Workman has been the one and only staff person, paid staff person. But if we are looking to hire paramedics, and you might be managing three or four different people, um, you know, I think that yeah. level of oversight and management um, is also very important in somebody. I, I, I agree 100 percent I think it's it's important I mean my belief is that this town is heading in the next 10 years you know 
oftentimes when you interview people, one of the standard questions you always say, where do you see yourself in five years? I think one of our questions is, where do you see the department in 10 years? Mm -hmm. Because that's, that's where we're heading. The department today is not going to be the department in five years or 10 years. We've, we've, already, mm -hmm. we've already established that by voting in the additional money for the full-time paramedics mm -hmm. that are going to be uh, benefited mm -hmm. and come on board. Um, so I, we're growing. The department needs to uh, uh, grow and expand with it, mm -hmm. which I believe every single member over there is willing to do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We, ju we just need to be cautious and put the right person. Mm -hmm. it, basically, if you could put it in the job description, you've got to have an open mind and, and, and go with the flow and grow. That mm -hmm. would be the ideal candidate I think we're looking for. Yeah. Not of, I show up, I put water on, or you know, we do CPR. I mean, it's so I guess getting to that, your point earlier, uh, getting to your point earlier, are we looking for more of the manager type leader slash the versus the um, the implementer uh, person who would actually put the water on the fire? Is that what you're saying? No, I I think we're looking for a unicorn personally. <laughs> I mean, okay. they don't necessarily <laughs> exist because. You, if I sit here as a select board member, I want to make sure they understand the budget. I want to make sure that they're not deficit spending, mm -hmm. right? And that they, you know, uh, understand the process, you know, the, the, that there's value in, in getting the officer certifications before you make them an officer, right? And all that learning and education goes on. But if I'm sitting as a resident recently, I want to make sure the fire department shows up at my house when I call them. <laughs> Right, so I want to make sure we're staffed and that we have the equipment and that, that um, uh, this did not happen, but that the, you know the truck didn't roll because it had it, it was out of service and it had a flat tire. You know, it, it's got to be that person that's going to be do it all. They're just going to commit to it, and um, there's going to be a lot of growing pains. I think mm -hmm. over, over the next five to ten years. Ten years out, I think we might be in a good stretch, mm -hmm. but this next chief, man, woman, whoever it may be. I, I think there's going to be growing pains as we transition mm -hmm. with, with fewer resources and more needs. Well, I hope we find that unicorn. <laughs> yeah. I think you know, this is a good, thanks for taking the lead on this. I think the, um, the position statement's a good, good beginning. Um, I think we could beef up certain sections, especially focusing more on the fire EMS department itself and you know, figure out how much we need to say about the town per se. But I mean, I think it's, it's good backdrop on there. For sure, and some of the issues maybe with you know aging equipment and those kinds of things um, would be good to to mention. I guess my only question too um, on the posting part, uh, you've referred to um, the position operates as a strong chief. And that's been the case. Is that something we want to continue? I know at one point we talked about not necessarily doing that, um, well, or at least talking about it. Yeah. Whether that's a really a, a crucial need or not. No, I, I mean again. As a select board member, I'm open to either side of it. Today, right now, that's the law of the town, mm -hmm. subject to annual, uh, town meeting change. Mm -hmm. yeah. Does the term strong chief have a specific meaning? Yes. Okay. Want to give the definition? Not to put you on the spot. <laughs> it does put me on the I'm spot. Sorry. Thanks a lot. I can Google I appreciate it. it. <laughs> yeah. It'll be a, a, a mismatch, but. Oh, okay. uh, yeah, basically the strong chief has the ability to make policy decisions, um, hiring, firing decisions. decisions. Salary-wise, uh, they can make those, but only in conjunctions with, uh, conjunction with the select board. Uh, so there's a number of things. Okay, so strong so chief actually the, means something. Yeah. It does, yeah. There's a level of independence there, yeah. you okay. know, apart from the select board, essentially, to sum it up in that regard. Okay. Good. So shall we, how would you like to proceed? Would you like us to just get you individual comments to do some editing and playing with this? And, yep. And I'd like to certainly want, you know, Joy and, and Stephen to. And I did provide, the, I mean, if it's easier to, I don't know if it would be, but I did provide the Word document to our town administrator okay. for editing, but I'm happy to do the edits too for formatting purposes. <laughs> okay. And any pictures you want to change, that's fine too. <laughs> it was a quick yeah, Google cool. search of Bashish does. That's fine. And then could you remind us... The um, document in the word form is in the Dropbox. It's in the Dropbox. Okay, good. Um, and then going with this as a piece, um, you were going to sort of head up the 
search committee per se. Do you want to talk about that just for a second? We're yeah, so, so now that we have these pieces in place, I can put together similar to what we have. I didn't get it done for tonight, but similar to what we have before us tonight for the town administrator and the senior center building committee, a, a charge um, for that committee. And I'll start with the basis of what we already have, and then we can tweak it or adjust or Mm -hmm. I'll start with that, build on it, and then submit it back mm -hmm. saying, initially we agreed to a five-person group. This is what the makeup right. would be. Does it still make sense to do that way yeah. or not? And put in a timeline. Okay. Um, add in, I, I mean, I like the idea. Assuming we're not going to get three expert retired firefighter slash EMS chiefs to be on our search committee, because I don't think there's that many that live in town. Um, I like the idea of finding a way to fund an assessment center mm -hmm. when we get to the final candidates mm -hmm. and then put them through um, the real world version um, that many municipalities in Massachusetts do. I realize there's a cost associated with mm -hmm. that. It's kind of a simulation exercise, right? From what I understand. Yeah. Yep. Basically for the day or something like that. Mm -hmm. It's basically, you know. How, how do you react under stress? They're throwing different scenarios at you in the middle of it, and you, mm -hmm. you know, how, how does it go? And on the on the five person or so committee, we we did have an out, didn't we have an outside? We were recommending an outside fire person from not from town. Right, right now, we three of the five seats are filled. Okay. So there's the select board yep. appointee, okay. the um, designated department head, and that's the police chief. Mm -hmm. And then we want we wanted a non-resident. Uh, fire chief command level status well this one ends up being a retiree but uh, chief pond from Hoyoke mm -hmm. okay. who up until he became chief of the Hoyoke fire department was a resident of Southampton and all his kids graduated or are graduated from Hampshire regional mm -hmm. okay okay um, and so that leaves two seats open okay all right which in theory would be I would I would prefer to have resident yeah absolutely residents sit. we do have an application from one resident okay. yeah. Yeah. great okay good anything else on that so let us uh, commit to getting any thoughts and feedback on edits and additions or changes mm -hmm. on these couple things that john has drafted here and um, get that to him before our 29th meeting and we can pick it up again we'll put it back on the agenda for then okay all right next up um we're almost Almost getting ready. <laughs> TA search update. Uh, town administrator search update committee charge. Um, this too is a draft that I put together um, just as an idea of how we might uh, proceed with this. We have uh, for our next meeting three proposals in from the firms that we contacted that might do the um, carry out the search committee duties for us uh, and uh, I have just forwarded them to you by email just so you could have some advanced reading there. Not terribly lengthy, but nonetheless, there's a lot of information in them. I think one of our challenges may be in terms of cost, how we deal with that in terms of what we budgeted versus what they're looking for. So we may have to look at other creative ways to find some funding to supplement um, the budgeted amount we've put forward um, in order to hire somebody. But. Uh, the idea here would be, and this is just a proposal, and this is too open for edit, and again, I would want Stephen and Joy to weigh in on this, so I'll, I'll just go through it very briefly, but proposing nine members, one from the select board, four from the general public, four representatives of town departments, uh, basically would be approximately a six-month period, um, report to the select board, um, typically electing off of their chair and vice chair and clerk, um, open meetings obviously recorded and posting minutes, um, and then we'll work with the selected consulting firm to provide any information relevant to the town, or town administrator's role and expectations within the context of the needs of town of Southampton. And that, I think some of what you've put there is the, the um, overview of Southampton would be a bit of that same information. We could probably borrow a large part of that for the same, uh, same uh, reason here to put it on the TA search as well. But then to work with this consulting firm uh, to verify the final profile and job description wage classification of the town administrator, submit that to PQB for review, uh, and then to the select board, and then basically the, I'm assuming without really reading all their proposals, but a proposal would be for me to have them do all the necessary advertising and conduct the application and first level screening process, uh, and then working with the committee, um, review the screened applicants, 
and develop a list of perhaps five qualified candidates for further review and interviews. Uh, committee then does those interviews and presents the top two finalists to the select board for final interviews and selection. So that was my first take at a, at a draft charge for this committee. Um, totally, totally open to ideas. I'm not quite sure how it was done before. I know the Collins Center, I believe, was engaged in 2017 to carry out the search where they were. where we found Ed uh, among however, I'm not sure how many applicants we had at that time, um, but this is at least a draft. So any first comments on this? So I, th I don't know. I, th I think this particular position of all the positions in town, we should not defer to a committee. I think the select board should just do this. I think the select board should be the search committee in conjunction with whatever outside resources we have. Mm -hmm. I mean, going down to a nine member committee, four of which are gonna be department heads, mm -hmm. um, one from the select board. I, I think if we just keep it the, the five elected, you know, the, the five of us are the senior elected people of the town. Mm -hmm. this, this is, the, this is the, the most crucial position we have in the town that reports directly to us. Right. Um, going down that road, I would want to have listening sessions and get input from others, but I, I think, to borrow a phrase from a former president, I think the buck stops here with us. Mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. we, we need to do this. And, uh, and, you know, we really only have four, we have less than four months mm -hmm. now, it, unless we extend, and, and our current town administrator is gracious enough to postpone his retirement to <laughs> BG, <laughs> um, we, you know, I don't know. He just got back from vacation. I, know. I think he might be enjoying his freedom a little really too much. Really enjoyed that week laughing. Yeah. Yeah. But I, I almost, I almost see that. Really looking that, forward to retirement. That the the, yeah. the select board take this on, and, and we just we we commit to doing this. And if that means pull two dates, the the first and third Monday of every month, those are standing nights that we're going to do this when we need to meet, and mm -hmm. we just we keep pushing this. Through, because ultimately the five of us have to agree on this. Sure. No, so if we're involved from the start to finish, we know every aspect. And yeah, but I, there's got to be public input yeah, yeah, into no, the process. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, would, Dan? would we just for clarification? What you said? Would we want still want to include a, an organization like the Collins Center to provide? Yeah, there would um, still we'd still be guidance and we'd right. still be getting the the um, the outside. Okay. Consulting okay. firm or whatever, uh, search firm, executive search firm is what they kind of call themselves. We'd still be trying to engage them, okay. yeah, to do the, understanding. a lot of that basic paperwork. Yeah, and yeah. Here's the one little glitch to think about if you actually want to do it start to finish. Mm -hmm. And your pool of candidates may shrink because the advantage of doing and whether it's a five member, seven member, nine member intermediate search, intermediary search committee is guess what? They're bringing forward the finalists. Once you become a finalist, your name is public. Your current employer knows about it. Mm -hmm. If you don't do that, guess what happens at the beginning? Your, you, your name is yeah. now public, so. I get that, but it, couldn't we structure it in a way that we, we charge, instead of forming this, the select board holds authority. Instead of creating this committee, this committee is actually X advisors, whoever that is. I, don't, I can't remember, I don't want to mention one of the three and not all three of them, but whoever, whether it's Collins I'll just say or consult, consulting firm. One of the consulting firms, yeah. you, you go out, you, here's what we're looking for, here's our feedback, yeah. you go yeah. conduct the screening process, bring back three candidates for us that meet these qualifications. And may, yeah, that would probably work. Yeah. I just, it What's also kind of gets some of the internal politics of this town yeah. out of it. Well, and it's, it's kind of, okay, so it's basically the last couple of bullets here. You know, review the screened applications from the, from the consulting firm, you know, and develop a list of five yeah. for further review and interviews, and then, well, I guess we wouldn't present the top two to ourselves. We would decide the top two to interview. But, I mean, essentially, what I think I'm hearing you say here is to basically substitute wherever I've got the committee. The committee shall be have, part of have these, that be the consulting firm. 
itself, uh, the entire select board, rather than a committee, a separate committee. Right. Okay, well, that's a or, thought. Or think about this. This is the charge we give to the consultant mm -hmm. to go do and then come back to us on the third from bottom paragraph. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Sounds efficient. Yep. Yep. Okay. All right. Well, again, um, I, I'm sorry, Chris, yeah. not to be literally belong no, this, fine. but yeah. I'm also thinking this is what these folks do. If you go on either one of the, the mm -hmm. of all three of their websites, you're going to see multiple town administrators, yep. CFOs, comp controllers, fire chiefs. Yep. They know who's available and who's out there in the in the yeah. area. No, that's that's the intent that they would do all the all the advertising and getting applications and all that kind of yep. stuff and go through the screening to see. Who meets our, our criteria in terms yeah. of, you know. And that. for whatever initial questions they have, you know, I, I think of them in the private side. They're the headhunters. Mm -hmm. Here's what we want. Here's what we're looking for. Yep. You know, go identify the top three candidates. Mm-hmm. Okay. And bring those forward. Okay. Well, let's, let's. Um, also maybe speeds up the process. Yeah, it might. Um, so let's pick this up, too. We'll, we'll try to put this back on the agenda for the next meeting because I would like to have us have time to review the three proposals that came in from these consulting firms and then if we've got questions you know if we're kind of leaning one way or another or if we've got questions to go back on I was thinking about whether we needed an interim meeting just to focus on that so that we weren't delaying even more but I don't know I'm hoping maybe by the 29th or certainly the first meeting in September we ought to be able to choose which select which consulting firm could help us out so uh, if everybody will do their own due diligence and read through those reports, and then again, if you've got some special comments, just fire them at me individually, and I'll I'll do another revision on this for the next time around. Okay. Okay. Thank you. All right. All right. Next, uh, we talked about this last week briefly, uh, and um, this is a an attempt for the Southampton Senior Center Building Committee Draft Committee Charge. Uh, this is an, in anticipation of having a building committee getting formed. Uh, we don't have anything in place now like we do have the Public Safety Building Committee, so some of this follows some of the same uh, parameters, I guess I would say, of this Public Safety Building Committee. And this is just a first stab at it. Um, I had worked a little bit with um, Chair of the Council on Aging Board, but we haven't really vetted this um, with the full board, so this was just a first reaction on this too. Um, Seven voting members, um, basically um, trying to um, uh, follow up and, and use actually the center, the senior center feasibility study report um, that has been developed by Abacus uh, as their primary reference material, uh, and then uh, basically working with whatever funds are going to be allocated through the estate of David Parsons to investigate additional sources of funding available, not limited to grants and capital com campaigns, uh, to pay for the site acquisition, design and engineering fees, soft costs, and construction, and work with the select board to allocate that funding. Uh, and basically work with the town administrator to draft, and I, I don't think I've got this phrase correctly, but to dra the second from the bottom, uh, to draft relevant statement of work this is probably more for prior to construction. It would be final architectural design, uh, et cetera, kinds of um, services. I can tidy that up. I've got something from the earlier um, uh, grant application that we put in for PQB, uh, for public safety that I think would be the similar language that we'd use. But this is just a first, first thought. So any quick reactions on that one? And then we'll, again, not vote on this. I'd rather have people Mm -hmm. have a chance to digest it and get the other two members yeah the um thoughts. the only thing that i would i would add i think 99 percent of this is fine it's uh on the start of the second page uh -huh. working with dedicated funds allocated through the estate uh, the committee shall investigate additional sources of funding available not limited to grants capital campaigns pay site acquisition design engineer fees soft costs and construction <laughs> work select board and others is appropriate to allocate funding i interpret that to mean they could start campaigning and raising funds mm -hmm. So if that is the case, which I'm not opposed to at all, I would want to specify that any such funds collected must be maintained separately in the custody of the town treasurer in a separate standalone fund. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's it, a it's easy to account for. You can see it there. It's you know all things the town treasurer would do anyways. Mm -hmm. But uh, 
if you're going to start campaigning and um, doing fundraising, I envision probably at some point there'd be stock transfers that would come through. Uh -huh. So you don't want those ending up. Sure. Good point. Okay. Other than that, I think it's good. Okay. Dan, any quick thoughts? Uh, nothing off the top of my head. Okay. But I will review. Ed, anything? Okay. It's going to mess up your numbers, but I might, <laughs> I might suggest that you consider making the COA director a voting member of the committee. Uh, okay. That's all. That? Yep. Okay. Yep. And one thing I hadn't. Um, yeah. Okay. We can do that. Well, we can fiddle around with numbers a little bit. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because yeah, we do need an uneven number of people just to have a good, good vote. Okay. All right, so I will tinker with that one a little bit more, and there'll be a Council on Aging Board meeting before we meet in early September, I believe. So at least by that meeting, I think we'll have any further feedback on that. Okay. And one quick last one. Uh, let's see, the financial treasury, uh, sorry, financial closeout timeline schedule. Uh, we've got this in our package. This has been both Bradley and Jen have um, agreed to this and confirmed that this is what they're working on. And I do believe right now, as of the April, sorry, April, August 11th, uh, the date was to post all of the April 23 receipts. And I do believe that was the last financial report we got from Bradley. So it looks like they're on schedule. Yes. Uh, August 18th, this is the week that they're off at UMass for um, treasurer's training school, whatever. Um, is Bradley gone too, or is it just treasurer? This is Treasurer Collectors, treasure collectors the, account, the accounting school will come up a little later. later. Okay, so this is the treasurer school. Yeah. Okay, and so the idea would be by our, toward the end of our, uh, end of August, our last meeting, that the May receipts would be posted. Um, then, um, you know, trying to keep up with the June receipts in early September and then having uh, September 30th for everything being posted and ready to, to deal with, so that looks like they're at least trying to be on schedule. Um, yeah. Any comments on that? Thank you for their hard work. Yeah, no, they're, they're working at it, so that's good. Um, and just one little announcement here. It's not um, nothing to go through tonight, but uh, something has been forwarded in your emails too. Uh, through the Cost Efficiencies Committee, we've been looking at um, a variety of things, as you know, in terms of ways to reduce costs, ways to improve services, ways to be more efficient in our services to residents. Um, and with that, as we've said that we're at a crossroads with the fire uh, EMS department with a new fire chief coming on board. Uh, we also uh, have our town administrator retiring in December. We've got our highway, uh, sorry, our water commissioner, uh, water superintendent, excuse me, uh, retiring in early September, I believe, which is only hmm, maybe three weeks away, something like that. Um, so what is, uh, we've done at Cost Efficiencies is revive a, a report that had been done in 2016. And this was a report done by a group called Community Paradigm uh, that reviewed the structure and operations of the Southampton town government uh, to look at the kinds of issues that we would have, or were having at that time, um, some of the strengths and weaknesses that we had and made some recommendations now since then, in the interim seven year period, a lot of things have changed and things have been put into place. Um, so the whole thing is not up for grabs, but there are a couple of things in there in terms of recommending uh, whether we might look at a home rule charter, uh, whether we might look at combining highway and water into a DPW, for example. So I just wanted to bring that to select boards um, knowledge that, uh, and you have the copy of the report, so have it have another reading assignment in your leisure time, um, but uh, cost efficiencies is gonna be picking that up and trying to see if there's something in there that we need to be able to act on and you know that would make sense for our current context. And again, I, I think timing is everything. I think looking at the uh, Department of Public Works, which under that analysis that the Department of, uh, was it DOR or DLS? Local Services did, was, I think was, D was it? the Public Works would take over the Highway department, the water department, the parks and rec, the cemeteries. Yeah. And there's one other group in there. Yep. And I just look, again, we look forward. How many open spots did we have on the last election ballot where we weren't able to get enough citizen participation to mm -hmm. cover these seats, consolidating them down and look at it. And especially with the time, I mean, the time of the fact is that our water superintendent is retiring. Mm -hmm. You know, often th these are just like the fire department. These are times for us to look at changes so that they don't impact 
people in their existing positions. Right. Yeah. And it may be, you know, that there's things that are, you know, they're, they're moot issues in some of it because it is seven years old. Some things have been put in place. But yep. there are things that I think that might have been nuggets that never really got acted on because it wasn't appropriate at the time. It, it, it just didn't feel, you know, like the right time to do it. So, you know, it doesn't hurt to do a second look while we're in the middle of change to just not forget some of the history that had been created because there was a perceived need that we might be doing things a little bit or could be doing things a little bit more effectively on, and maybe doing something better with citizen participation, et cetera. So we will be picking that up um, at the uh, cost efficiencies meeting, okay? All right, uh, we are at any other necessary business. And here I'm gonna thank you for your patience and ask you to come to the mic and tell us who you are and what you'd like to tell us. And just give us your name, and that's okay. <laughs> Careful. <laughs> it doesn't bite. Give us your name. Good evening. Uh, well, where, you, where you live? What road you're How at? How you doing? Good. My name is Aaron Bauer. I'm a resident at 266 County Road okay. on this side of town. I've lived in town for 13 years, and I need some help, and I have a concern. I went around to some of the neighbors. I actually even wrote up a letter, and I spoke with um, the Board of Health about my concern already, and they suggested that I bring the documents and the evidence that I have to the town administrator and to the select board. So I work, I get, get start at 4 a.m. and I usually get home at 6, so mm. a very long day for me. So I opted just to come to a meeting. Well, thank thank you. you for your time tonight and listening to me. <clears throat> to whom it may concern, I'm a concerned citizen and taxpayer of the town of Southampton. I'd like to bring to your attention my neighbor at 264 County Road. For the past three years, our neighbor has refused to take care of his property in the front and backyard. It is to the point where the brush from his backyard is starting to grow over into mine on the north side of my yard. Many friends of neighbors have been asking me, when will he mow his lawn and take care of his property? I don't have an answer. <laughs> I've tried. My children's rooms both face that direction and we keep the blinds closed just so we don't have to look at the neglect of the property owner. I have spoken with the father of the property, which is Mr. Eric Sexton, which is, I looked it up, his wife actually owns the property, about the fact that the son refuses to take care of the home that's still in the mother's name. One person lives in the house, even though most of the time it looks abandoned. Mr. Sexton actually said to me, when the town gets involved, something will be done. Well, I need help. There is no reason that the yard front and back cannot be cleaned up. They actually pay somebody to snow plow and snow blow. I've seen it for the last few years. The parents moved out of the house. They live in Holyoke, down on the corner of Route 202 and Main Street in Northampton. They only stop by to pick up their personal mail. It's an eyesore to everyone, and it's becoming a health hazard. With the mosquitoes and ticks, the resident, the person that resides in the home, also does not bring in the trash cans, which, in the city of Westfield, I'm pretty sure, actually I know it's, you have to bring in your trash cans in the evening. I talked to the, the, the woman at the Board of Health and I actually looked into it. There is no bylaw in town. So this is where I need your help. I understand there was, there is a bylaw committee. She already left, <laughs> but I would actually like to propose that we look into putting in a bylaw to taking care of property maintenance. I also have picture evidence, and I also have signatures. I didn't, uh, under the ad, ad, uh, advice of Elaine Kucher, who is a friend and neighbor, she lives behind me, I only got signatures. I did not get printed names and addresses and phone numbers, which I will gladly go back and do, but I actually had them sign two copies to bring with me tonight. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, thank you for that. Does anybody have any? Would you like to see <laughs> the pictures? I actually would like you to see yeah, the pictures. Yeah, we'll see the pictures. Can I come forward? Sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I didn't blow them up because mm -hmm. I was originally I thought I was just going to mail everything. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Any objections if I take a photo of your photos? So I've got, <laughs> actually got them electronically. Is that okay? I, I took them on my iPad. I could email them. Okay. Does that work? Yeah, that works fine. That's probably good. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I guess my first thought would be that normally this would be probably a Board of Health issue, would it not be? Am I in Well, that I brought up the mosquitoes and ticks, and then my mother is 77, and when the trash cans are left out at the road, 
you can't see, mm -hmm. and she has a hard time turning mm -hmm. her head. And I physically have actually walked the trash cans up myself, mm -hmm. and I just, mm -hmm. I went to the parents and I it's asked like you had a I apologize that it's long, but oh, it's fine. <laughs> They're all, there's just two. I just made them because I wanted to have an extra set. Right, okay. Yeah. But the, the backyard is getting, like his fence is falling into my fence. Mm -hmm. And with this type of year, with the rain, mm -hmm. the mosquitoes have been mm -hmm. yeah. pretty bad in my backyard. Mm -hmm. So would it, yeah. Madam Chair, would it yes. be appropriate for us to just request it during the next two weeks that both our uh, building commissioner and our uh, director of board of health mm -hmm. do drive-bys and yeah, report so. back on any... Mm -hmm. They're going to know whether or not there's existing violations from a legal standpoint that we can take right. versus us yeah. and give us feedback. Um, mm -hmm. Maybe a step one. Seems like a reasonable request. I don't know. Any, any thoughts on your part? I mean, I think to at least do a drive-by and at least see what's going on there, whether they could find anybody Cause, yeah, cause at I, home or not, but at least yeah, understand the property. And let me work with Aaron on tweaking his letter of request. Okay. Okay. To point it back at the Board of Health a little bit. So. Okay. Yeah. Yep. All right. I did speak with her, yeah. and she she recommended that I bring it to the town administrator, and okay. I just I yeah. looked it up yesterday, and I'm like, I gotta go tomorrow night. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Good. Well, I'm so sorry we didn't get you in the beginning no, of the it's, meeting. No, it's I, fine. I, really I know there's always agendas. Yeah, no, it's okay. Um, I apologize. Though. But uh, but yeah, no, I think and normally, I mean, as as John said, this is usually that's where that would all start. Would be the Board right. of Health. Sometimes the building commissioner gets involved depending on whatever well she said that there's no bylaw in place and her next suggestion which yeah. I didn't get I didn't do it yet but I know that there's other towns yeah. where or HOAs you're required mm. to take care of your property sure, maintenance sure. Yeah, yeah. if I lived over on Caitlin way and I have two friends that live over there and my I didn't mow, I mean the lawn at one point was this tall mm -hmm. if I didn't mow my lawn I would be a little upset you know my neighbors were mm -hmm. You know, <laughs> okay. but it's. I just need help. Yeah. Okay. I think it's time. It's been it's been long enough. And when the father made that statement to me, mm -hmm. I think that that mm -hmm. really got to me. It was the final straw, right? Well, you know, um, I guess you could say it that way. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. Okay. Good. Okay. Well, thank, thank you. Thank you for, for your time. No, tonight. thank you for taking the time thank to come. You. Appreciate it. All right, and and. Uh, be in touch with Ed in terms of sending the photos and back and forth on that discussion. I'll okay. You All right. Thank you. Sir. Sounds good. Thanks yes, for that. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right. Okay. Was there any other business that can't wait until our next meeting? If not, I think we've kind of gone through the issues. We talked about the fire chief committee charge. I'm pretty sure we don't have the um, Dan. You might know from the tech meeting the. Um, Call attendant on the voice over IP. I think that's it's, still it's still being uh, recorded yep. or about to be recorded. Yeah. Okay. We have then. Let's pop down. We have some minutes to approve uh, for April third. Uh, sorry, April eleven, April twenty five, and June twenty. Um, if anybody has any. If nobody objects, I'll make a motion to approve April eleventh, April twenty fifth, and June twentieth minutes as presented. Second. All right. I just have a couple of there, just a couple of spacing issues on April 11th under the um, uh, down at the bottom under the the indented part. A motion was moved by Maureen Groden that the um, the third third and fourth sentence need to be tied together. That's all. It's a it was a spacing issue, and then one of the sites at the very bottom uh, site in this case was just a typo. Would be S I T E S rather than S I G H T S. But other than that, I'll give that. To Ed, um, all those in favor? Aye. 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 All right. All three minutes are approved. Um, Ed, we just approved the minutes with a couple of minor changes. I'll show you on one, just one, one of them on April 11th. I'll show you after the meeting. Uh, is there anything else? I think we've pretty much carried out things on pending items. Although uh, you might want to tell us something. I know there's something coming up on the personnel classification. Compensation, you had something set up for August 22nd, I think, with... with no, the, the Collins did something? No, no, the What, what pray tell do they have for us? <laughs> Isn't uh, the Collins Center presenting something, or...? Yes. Yeah. yeah. So that, I was going to let you share what that is, yeah? Yes, uh, they have uh, set, set up a, uh, shall we say, 
next steps Zoom meeting uh, and uh, all the employees uh, that are listed in the study have been invited to that Zoom kickoff. Um, I think it's next Tuesday, the 22nd at nine, nine, nine o'clock, I, nine nine, I think it's at nine. Nine a.m., I believe. Uh, I also um, included in the invitation any boards that might have oversight over those uh, particular employees. But uh, they have been invited, and for the ones that cannot make it, it'll be recorded uh, so that they can watch it at a future date. Great. Okay. Good. So with that, I think we are actually through the agenda. Could I have a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Second. Aye. All those in Aye. favor? Aye. Yeah. Okay. We're we're adjourned at about seven forty-five. Oh, April eleventh was amended. Just a tiny thing. There's a typo. So the two are okay. Yeah. 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 There's just a typo one. Okay.